welcome to our all-star party for Joan Collins. Collins, ladies and gentlemen all, before we welcome Joan into this festive room, would you please join me in greeting two previous Variety Club honorees, the man we honored in 1978, Jimmy Stewart. gathered last year, Clint Eastwood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you this year's Variety Club's honoree, Miss Joan Collins. is filled tonight with the rich and famous. And here to begin our proceedings is the man who knows their lifestyles and became rich and famous himself by telling us all the news that's fit to shout. Robin Leach. Not bad. That was good. Thank you, Morning. Thank you and good evening, Joan, and all of your friends. This is truly an evening of elegance and a party with pizzazz. The ladies are all looking glamorous and the men are certainly standing tall. What a wonderful tribute this is as Britain and America join hands across the seas to show our special love to Joan Collins, who belongs now to both great nations. Congratulations, lovely lady. I'm genuinely happy to call you a precious pal. Joan, many of your friends are here tonight to entertain you. Already, you've met America's national treasure, Jimmy Stewart, and the mayor of Carmel, Clint Eastwood. You'll be hearing from both of them later in the program. And of course, the voice of Variety Club's Monty Hall, who will announce great news that a hospital facility is to be dedicated in your honor. As I introduce the rest of our cast, I would ask that they stand. We want to give Joan her first idea of what's in store for her on this glamorous occasion. Joan, also entertaining you tonight, the gifted and multi-talented comedian and actress, truly a golden girl, B. Arthur. A legend who proudly put San Francisco center stage on the world map and then globe hop to sing about it, there is only one Tony Bennett. She's fantastic, Joan, one of your closest friends, the gifted pianist and singer whose records and artistry are exciting audiences all over the world, Michael Feinstein. <laughs> Beautiful, kind and caring, still celebrating her wedding day, the multi-talented star of Knott's Landing, another of your dearest friends, Michelle Lee. The man who can truly be called the Voices of America, a unique entertainer who has the world's best identity problem, Rich Little. From 
our mother country, star of stage and screen, and a member of the royal family of talent, Lynn Redgrave. I'll stay terribly proper again. Like you, Joan, he's proudly kept the British flag flying high. An actor with an uncanny ability to star for all nations. Your good friend with a very stiff upper lip, Michael York. <laughs> the conductor whose baton will lead the Variety Club Orchestra in accompaniment to our happy proceedings, Nick Perito. Tonight, Joan, you are our fair lady. With champagne wishes, we all hope this will be the happiest night of your life. Welcome to your very own party. Yes, friends, welcome to our all-star party for Joan Collins. Son just played the NFL's VCR quarterback. VCR. Here's Richie. Joan, I can't tell you what a thrill it is <laughs> that the Variety Clubs are finally honoring you. I think it's a long time in coming. I just... What? What? That's her sister, Jackie Collins. <laughs> of course, I, uh, I was just, just rehearsing. Joan, I know a lot about you. As a matter of fact, Shirley MacLaine told me everything. And... No, she, she should know because Shirley used to be you. Okay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Nick. If you can get the boys in a band together, and I sincerely doubt it, I would like to do a number for my new album. And I'd like to dedicate this to Joan Collins. Oh, and Robin, if, uh, if you'd care to jump in during the song, I will, I will try my best to ignore you. Often happen. Yes, keep it, keep it soft. Nick, you're just too marvelous. Too marvelous for words like glorious, glamorous, and that old standby, alimony, I mean, um, amorous. <laughs> Just think, Joan, if, if I'd met you first, I would be a richer man today. Rich, Rich, how about James Mason? It's all too wonderful. <laughs> I'll never find the words that say enough, tell enough. I know they're just not swell enough. Jack Nicholson. Hey, man. <laughs> You're just too much, too very, very, very. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> to ever be, I got to tell you this. In Webster's Dictionary, what can I tell you? Jimmy Carter. And so. <laughs> I'm borrowing a love song from the birds to tell you that you're marvelous. Too marvelous for words. Hot damn. <laughs> Rich President Ronald Reagan. <laughs> well, you're just 
too marvelous, uh, too marvelous for words, like glorious and glamorous, and that old standby, Republic, I mean, amorous. Great rich, do somebody bigger. It's all too wonderful. I'll never find the words. But saying off, but telling off, I know you're just not swelling off. John Wayne. You're much too much. <laughs> too very, very, very to ever be in Webster's Dictionary. When you grow up, Pilgrim, you may sound like this. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. And so I'm borrowing a love song from the bar. The town you got marvelous. The town you got your marvelous. At the town Joan, Michael and I have known you for a long time. Whether we're out in public or whether we're at each other's home, we always seem to have a good laugh and we have a terrific time together, right? We know the Joan that people seldom see. The warm and wonderful and silly side of you. So tonight, we would like to tell everybody how we feel about you. Of thee we sing, baby. You have got that certain thing, baby. Shining star and inspiration. Worthy of a mighty nation. Of thee we sing. You're the top. You're the Coliseum. You're the top. You're the Lou Museum. You're a melody from a symphony by Strauss. You're a Bendel bonnet, a Shakespeare sonnet, you're Mickey Mouse. She gets too hungry for dinner at eight. She likes the theater, but never comes late. Now that's a lie. She'd never bother with people she'd hate. That's why the lady is a you my lucky star. Champ! I saw you from I was going to say champ. Yeah, right. You do something to me. Something that simply mystifies me. I've got you. In this world of ordinary people, <laughs> extraordinary people, I'm glad there is you. Thou swell, thou witty, thou sweet, thou grand. You are too beautiful, my dear, to be true. And I am a fool for beauty. I think he's got a crush on you, sweetie pie. But why can't you be hanged? Alexis Colby's a four-star brat, but underneath 
You're a pussy cat. I've no proof when people say you're more or less aloof. But, but you're, you're sensational. I don't care you know. if you are called a fair Miss Frigidaire. Because you're sensational. Making love is quite an art. What, what you, you require, require is the proper squire to fire your heart. Hey, do, do you mind if I join you? Mind? I'd be thrilled. Please, okay. please. Oh, this is such a lovely party. Well, the variety club parties are always wonderful parties. Yeah. You know, I remember the one for you a few years ago, the night that you and Fred McMurray did a song together. Fred played saxophone, you played piano. What was the name of that song? Ragtime Cowboy Joe. Yeah. It's, it's the only song I know how to play. <laughs> oh, come on. You're kidding. Well... Uh, once I did sit down and I played Rachmaninoff's concerto in C major all, all the way through. Oh, how does it go? Oh, how the run. When he fires that gun, so the western folks all know. That he's the high for loot and root and root and son of a gun from Arizona, the ragtime cowboy. Talk about your cowboy. cowboy. Ragtime cowboy Joe. that Rachmaninoff was so talented. <laughs> and speaking of music, I can't wait for Tony Bennett to sing. Uh, he's a fine uh, singer. He's an Italian boy. Italian? He? His real name is Antonio Benedetto. That's funny. I'd have sworn he was Italian. <laughs> and it's nice that so many of Joan's British friends are here. I envy them, all their pomp and royal occasions. You know, I was only present at one, and I will never, ever forget all those people bowing with awe on their faces as they kept repeating, Your Majesty, Your Majesty. Mm -hmm. You were at Buckingham Palace. No, no, I was at Chasen's one night when Sinatra arrived. <laughs> well, Sinatra's great. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I love Frank, and I love all the British people. Yeah, and I think they've done very well. <laughs> you know, for a people who drive on the wrong side of the road, drink warm beer, mispronounce laboratory, and to this day carry George Washington AWOL. Well, I just hope the British like us as much as we like them. Yes, yeah, so do I. And if it would help, I say to all of our British guests here and all watching at home, that personally, I have always considered Paul Revere a loudmouth. <laughs> you know, I think it'd be nice if we drink a toast to Joan. Oh, I quite agree. To you, Joan, dear. Dear Joan. Life, love, happiness, and success always. May you live forever, Joan. Thank you. Yes, Joan. Thank you. May you live forever.
Joan, I'm sure that every day is a foggy day in London town when you're not there. And here's someone who expresses that thought much more poetically and musically than I. Joan, the unforgettable Tony Bennett. Jimmy's Italian, you know. <laughs> day in London town had me had me down I viewed the morning with much alarm the British Museum had lost its charms How long, I wonder Could this dream last But the age of miracles Hadn't passed London town The sun was shining Everywhere Down the sun was shining been asked to introduce a lovely lady. Uh, excuse me, but haven't we heard enough of Robin Leach for one evening? Can't you do another impression? I do somebody know. new. Do, do Cagney. I don't do other people's voices, Rich. You're kidding. You, you mean this is your own voice? <laughs> you talk like that all the time? <laughs> oh, You're making funny. a couple of dollars oh, out of it. One more thing. When you're addressing me, I, I know it's, I'm being picky here, but could you uh, address me uh, by my full name? Rich and famous. <laughs> there you are, Wizard of Voices. Ladies and gentlemen, the actress who puts an accent on excellence, Lynn Redgrave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Robin! Robin Lynch! Well, so far tonight, we've laughed a lot, we've tapped our feet to some wonderful music, we've been entertained absolutely beautifully. Now, I will probably not make you laugh and uh, n not do anything I hope to cause you to tap your feet, but I do have something to say about the lady in whose name we're gathered here tonight. Now, it's often been said that sometimes one can't see the trees for the forest, and so too there are those who fail to see Joan for Alexis. 
And it is Joan, not Alexis, that I'd like to talk about tonight. Because, after all, before Alexis, there was Joan. Now, perhaps a few statistics in the present of her life, statistics too often overlooked in her celebrity, may help adjust the focus. Now, the dancing lessons began when Joan was three. Now, elocution lessons soon followed because she used to talk like Robin Leach. In early teens, <laughs> she was a photographer's model, and within a year, she was a cover girl. In mid-teens, Joan enrolled in the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, and before blowing out the candles on her 18th birthday, this young girl who believed in herself had become a star in only her fourth motion picture, which was aptly entitled, I Believe in You. It was then that 20th Century Fox waived a seven-year exclusive contract from across the sea, and Joan left the fog of London for the smog of Hollywood to appear in 50 major motion pictures in which she sang with Bing Crosby, she joked with Bob Hope, she held her own in films with Richard Burton, Betty Davis, Kirk Douglas, Joan Fontaine, Lawrence Harvey, James Mason, sometimes known as Rich Little, Ray Milland, Robert Mitchum, Paul Newman, Gregory Peck, Edward G. Robinson, Rod Steiger, Joanne Woodward, Sir John Gilgood, and others. And she perfected her craft, and she believed that it would lead her to the superstardom of her childhood fantasies. But fate and fame can have quixotic timing. It took all of that plus 25 television programs, major television programs, specials, miniseries, some of which she produced herself, to culminate in Dynasty, or Dynasty, as we say back over there, a series that began as an ensemble show but was to put her irrevocably up there where she always knew that she belonged. She rejuvenated Joan Crawford's shoulder pads, for which I have her everlasting thanks, and gave all of us the giddy fun of having a full-blown, old-fashioned star whose work and life we could love and hate and envy and applaud. And the price? Well, we were almost convinced that Alexis was Joan and that she lived in a glass house where she could have no secrets, no privacy, privacy, no personal life unscrutinized. But don't throw stones, because Joan just might hand them to Alexis, who will give them to the butler, and he'll lob them right back at you. <laughs> so, there you are. Tonight, we're having a marvelous party for a lady who has brought out the magic surely within her. She grabbed the brass ring, and she ran with it, to the delight of absolutely all of us. I think this is a bloody marvelous night, Joan. <laughs> and I'm very glad to be here. A fellow Brit celebrating you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bless you. You're no journey come lately at all. So I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, friends of Variety Club, for your courtesy to me. And I thank you, Joan, for your you to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Joan. I'm not here to uh, talk to you tonight. I'm, I'm here to speak for you. And I'd like to share something that uh, Joan confided to me. When the variety clubs first invited Joan to sit over there at the center table, she said, yes, yes, on one condition. And uh, this, you must realize, was back in mid-September when Los Angeles was hosting a very distinguished visitor from Rome. Now, Joan answered that call from Paul Keyes with, uh, with tears in her eyes. She had only moments before seen something on television that had moved her and us more than anything that she had seen for years, an emotional moment that we shall never, ever forget. And uh, Paul had shared the same emotional moment and had had the same reaction, so, so they made a pact. Now, having done all these wonderful variety club parties, and thank you, I've enjoyed all of them, Paul is used to surprising people. Now, Joan agreed that this evening could be a surprise as well, provided, provided that she could have a few moments of her own in the middle of the program to present her own very, very special guest. Now, Paul was to tell no one about this until it was absolutely necessary for the production of the program. I agree with Joan. This is a very fitting message of the Variety Club, dedicated as they are to the care and to the treatment of children. So the song that we're about to hear is a song of love and of hope 
and of dreams and of peace. And it was written for you tonight by the young man you are about to meet. In presenting him for Joan, let me say that, uh, <clears throat> well, as Alexis Colby, uh, Joan doesn't pretend to have a lot in common with Pope John Paul II. <laughs> but as Joan Collins, as a mother who loves children, Joan has something very much in common with His Holiness. Tony Melendez, a very loving and courageous young man. So allow me to introduce him to all of you in the words of the Pope, who said as he rushed to embrace him, Tony, Tony, Tony.
once again, the chairman of Variety Clubs International, Monty Hall. Thank you. Joan, my remarks are for you. Tonight, your name is inscribed on our Variety Clubs International honor roll as you join those who have preceded you in earlier parties just like this. Parties whose purpose was, and remains to be, providing care for underprivileged and handicapped children, regardless of race or creed. You can certainly understand why Variety is known as the show business charity as you look around this room tonight, and you think of our previous honorees. Now, can you believe this is our 12th year and we'll be dedicating our 12th hospital unit tonight. Previous honorees and the hospital units dedicated in their names are as follows. John Wayne's unit is in this, our Miami Children's Hospital. Elizabeth Taylor's unit is in this, New York's Flower Fifth Avenue Hospital. Jimmy Stewart's in our Minnesota Variety Heart Hospital, shown here. Ingrid Bergman's in this, our Blank Memorial Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Jack Lemons is in our Buffalo Children's Hospital, shown here. Burt Reynolds in this, the Eggleston Hospital for Children in Atlanta. Carol Burnett's in the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, shown here. The Frank Sinatra Family Wing is in this, our Seattle Hospital and Medical Center. There's a facility dedicated in the name of Lucille Ball in the Barbara Davis Juvenile Diabetes Hospital in Denver. President Dutch Reagan's unit is in the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, shown here, and the Clint Eastwood Recovery Center for Treatment of Chemically Dependent Persons is in this, the Community Hospital of the Monterey Peninsula. And I'm very happy to say, all of these facilities dedicated for our previous honorees enable Variety Clubs to continue and expand our treatment of those who need our help the most, the innocent children of the world. Now, before I announce our facility in your name, Joan, I believe our host for this marvelous evening, His Honor the Mayor, would like a word with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Clint Eastwood. Thank you. Thank you, well, Joan, I have, a, I have a letter for you that's on White House stationery. Well, <laughs> dear Joan, Nancy and I are delighted to join in the tribute to a lady who has put the sparkle back in the title Hollywood star. Although your name is synonymous with glamour and beauty, we know that this recognition from Variety Clubs International is for the caring person and devoted mother who is always ready to help when called upon to assist children in need. Variety Clubs continues to demonstrate what I've always believed, that people in show business have the biggest hearts of all. You can look with great pride on the facility that will be established in your honor knowing that it will give hope and a brighter future to a multitude of children. Their smiles are worth everything. We hope that you enjoy this special evening and we join in the applause and affection that will greet you. Sincerely, Ronald Reagan. Thank you. And now, uh, would you kindly escort Joan yeah. up here where we can all enjoy it? You can stay right up here, handsome guy like you. <laughs> Joan Collins, I know of personal incidents in your life, but you've proven your love and compassion for children, and I'm aware of many tortured hours of agony that you've suffered. We won't go into that because I know even the memories still hurt you. So tonight, recognizing our compassion for children, Variety Clubs International is proud to dedicate in your name, here at our Children's Hospital of Michigan, a subsidiary of the Detroit Medical Center, right behind you, that's it right there, where underprivileged and handicapped children will be cared for in your name. The Joan Collins Cardiovascular Surgery Inpatient Ward. I congratulate you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Joan Collins. Thank you. 
everybody. Um, Alexis, be Alexis wouldn't do this. <laughs> this has been the most wonderful, exciting night that I've ever had, and uh, I have had a few. <laughs> I can't tell you the feelings I had when I came into this room tonight, and I, I saw you all here, and there's so many people that I know and love, and if I had any idea that you'd all be here, I, I well, I would have really dressed up. <laughs> Now, since this is my night, and I'm in charge, and I love parties, none of you are going to leave this room until I say so. Because this is such an amazing party that I wanted to go on all night long, so you're trapped. And what I think I enjoyed the most about tonight was the magical mixture of British and Americans who entertained us. And since I consider that both countries are my home, it means a lot to me to see everybody having such a swell time. And I think we did have a swell time tonight, particularly me. You're all very, very dear. The only people that I really miss are my children, but they are in England and they couldn't get here, school and things like that. But I have so many friends here that makes up for it. To all of you who performed tonight, you are absolutely marvelous, sensational, brilliant, fantastic, wonderful. Michelle and Michael, <laughs> you're so good. <laughs> I love you, you are fantastic. You know, you could always have a career as a singer, you know? <laughs> Give up soap operas, they're finished anyway. No, 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 they're not, no. <laughs> I want to have a cassette of your songs to play to remind me of this wonderful evening. And Jimmy Stewart, a man that I have adored for years, I've never heard Rachmaninoff sung better. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. And if Rich Little could sing like that, he might get some place in life. <laughs> do you ever do female impersonation? You could do me. No? All right, next. <laughs> Seriously, you can sing in my show every time, any time you like. <laughs> B. Arthur, you are truly a golden girl, and I'm thrilled to watch your work close up. Your delivery, your poise, and your timing are a lesson to us all. And Robin Leach, I wish I could do your voice, but I can't. <laughs> I think that this night is rich and famous enough for you. Is it? Yes, definitely. Good. Thank you. And Tony Bennett, what a voice. All of us thank you for giving us a memory that we will never, ever forget. Lynn Redgrave, how can I ever thank you? Such lovely words, and they mean a lot coming from you, from a family that I really have respected. And um, I'm glad you told everybody the story of my life, because not too many people know it. Not too many. And to you, Clint Eastwood, you made my day and my night. And to you, Michael, thank you for keeping our secret and for presenting Tony Melendez for me. None of us will ever forget Tony, and I know that when I first saw him with the Pope, I was very moved. So, Tony, please stand up so that I'd like us all to applaud you one more time, because I think you're truly incredible. As you can see, as usual, I'm lost for words. To Monty Hall, you have made me ecstatic, and I'm truly honored to have my name associated with the superb humanitarian work that is done by you and the variety clubs. All of you know that Mike Frankovich, who is over there, dedicates his life to helping variety clubs international throughout the world. I think that this charity is so important because it helps children children are our future. What you may not know is that Mike and I go back a very long, long time ago. He was the producer of my first American movie called The Cameron Knights, and I played a naive serving wench, so you know how long ago that was. <laughs> and in the film with me was Mike's lovely wife, Binny Barnes. Binny and Mike, would you please stand up for a well-deserved round of applause for a lifetime of dedication and love to children. I'd also like to send greetings to the Variety Club of Great Britain, particularly to a good friend of Mike's and mine and a past international president, Sir James Carreras. To all of you who are 
I'm here tonight. I'll never forget it. It's been very, very special. Yeah. And you've made me feel very, very special. And I'm very honored, really honored. And um, thank you. And God bless all of you.